Hello everybody, Joe Bagdons here. Welcome back for another episode of Umineko. Uh, I lied at the end of the last episode when I said I would uh, record an another one later. That bold-faced lie, I just started drinking. And by the end of the night, I had like... Oh god, what I have? I think it was like three... Like three old fashions down and like... It was either three or four rum and cokes. There, there was a four somewhere in there. It might have been I had four old fashions. I don't know. Anyway... Uh, so yeah, I was in no shape to record, and unfortunately, uh, I was wrong about my work schedule, so I had work the next day, and was woken up, not by my alarm, but by a phone call asking, like, hey, were you supposed to work today? I'm like, uh, I don't know, was I? They're like, yeah. I'm like, oh. So then I threw myself out of bed, fucking shit shower shave in 20 minutes, and then I'm out the door. Fortunately, uh, it's the holiday schedule, which means no one important is at work, which means... It wasn't a big deal because nothing was going on because it's the holiday schedule and nothing is going on. Turns out I wasn't the only one to do that, though. So, eh. Yeah, it's their own fault for moving moving the schedule forward a day from what it normally is. Shit happens. Whatever. No one died. Just just got to make sure it doesn't happen again tomorrow. But yeah, so I was... Had a, had a teensy, teensy little bit of hangover at work today. Not, not bad. Like, I just kept my sunglasses on when I was outside and had a little bit of a headache, but... Other than that, I was fucking fit to go. But uh yeah, I just uh I just got off that shift, so I need to I need to get this out. Th this video recorded, otherwise, you know, I'm going to have like nothing in backlog by the time uh my normal, you know, schedule is done. Well, I might have like what's today? Today's the 10th as I'm recording this. Which, uh, my next video goes up on the 13th. Ooh, yeah, I'd have, like, nothing. So, I need I need at least that one one episode buffer to feel comfortable. You know, maybe a couple to, if I, to feel really comfortable. But, uh, ooh, boy. Ooh, boy. Backlog. I need it. I also noticed that I was a little flushed when I looked in the mirror. Like, kind of like my, my cheeks. Little, little, little red boy. Uh, not getting any sun, really. Uh, so that's weird. Hopefully I'm not getting sick, and hopefully it's just me being tired. I'm one of those people that, like, my body temperature just shoots up through the roof when I'm really tired, like I'm a little child that needs to be put to bed because you can tell that they're starting to, like, burn up. I don't know, kids are just like that. You'll, I mean, if any of you ever touch a woman uh, enough to, you know, have a child, uh, press X to doubt... You'll notice that some kids, they just, they're just they just like that. They start getting hot and sweaty. And it's like, all right, you need to go to bed. That's how I am. But I'm not a little fucking wet thing of luggage of a child. I'm a grown-ass man. But, uh, yeah, let's uh, stop talking about how sweaty I am and uh, start uh, talking about how fucking zombie cannon came through and just fucking murked Nanjo and Kumasawa with a laser sword. What do you mean? Look, man, some fucking oh, wacky shit. Shano, <laughs> yeah, that was fucking wild. Uh, yeah, it was... Oh, we can't say it was canon. Because it was, but it wasn't. It's complicated. なんと説明すればいいのか。現実さん。いや、パス。私たちの目の前で起こりました。確かにその、それは私たちの目の前にいただけれど、あれはその。何だったんだ。だけれど、あれはその。何だったんだ。だけれど、あれはその。何だったん
それが何を私は言えばいいのか Yeah, it's not gonna go well with your theory that witches don't exist. That there was a ethereal copy of canon, or maybe the real canon, I don't know, made out of butterflies who fucking bounced off the walls with his magic sword. Dr. Nanjo and Kumasawa had been killed. We understood that much. And it seemed that it had occurred in front of their eyes. But even so, they spoke awkwardly. They admitted that they had definitely seen the crime with their own two eyes. But when asked to explain what they had seen, their mouth suddenly shut. I can understand why Auntie Rosa was irritated and losing her patience. Well. So, yeah, a person came in through the back door. Someone wearing Cannon's clothes, but it wasn't quite Cannon. So it's a yeah, but then they got like really fucking weird. Yeah, can we use like proper nouns? Demo. All right, quit beating around the bush, bud. In a manner that didn't match his large body, Golda held his head and scratched at it. He didn't have a clue whether he was confused because he couldn't remember, or whether he was confused because he had seen something terrifying and couldn't accept it. And Shannon looked the same way. If she let her guard down, what she had just what she had seen just a short while ago would quickly melt away like a daydream, and she wouldn't even be able to remember what she had saw. And that's what she looked like. Only Genji looked composed as usual, so the questions were naturally directed at Genji. But even Genji had to take quite some time to gather his thoughts before he opened his mouth. Genji san, anata wa mitan desho. Katte guchi ni kitano wa dare? Hajime. Okay, good way to word it. No, 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 you, you missed the middle part there. Yeah. yeah, this is the part where it gets weird. そして姿を消しました。その時彼は間違いなく彼女ではありませんでした。そう。そうなんです。現地さんの言う通りなんですよ。口ではとても説明できない。いや、it's <laughs> A handkerchief covered in cobweb scum and then bursting into butterflies. If we in, uh, if we interpreted what they're saying favorably, meant that Auntie Rosa's conclusion had been correct from the beginning. Ken and Gun had disappeared from the back door in the kitchen with a serious injury. Then he had been taken to the servants' room and cared for. He had appeared, not disappeared. Then something terrifying had happened. Since those people couldn't imagine that Ken and Kun have pulled that off, they had started to suspect whether they really had been Ken and Kun. Is that how things are? In other words, this meant Ken and Kun had appeared. No matter how confused they were, no matter how muddled their words, that's what it meant in the end. So would Ken and Kun indeed use some trick to escape that room while it was locked? No, that doesn't matter anymore. The real problem is that Dr. Nanjo and Kumasawa were killed. Auntie Rosa had claimed that Kenikun was behind this from the very beginning. 
No matter how confused they became, and no matter how much they tried to deny it, they were halfway saying that, w that it was the truth. But even so, for some reason, it felt like their awkwardness couldn't be explained just by confusion. What had they seen? Like they said, had they really seen something unexplainable with words? Alright, give us a cut in with the fucking DM Beatrice or whatever. To laugh in our face and tell us how dumb we are. Auntie Rosa, having decided that she wouldn't be able to get any more out of them, concluded her questioning and said she wanted to check the two bodies. I was also interested in that. Even though these people didn't have a clue on what was going on in their confusion. Those who, If those of us who hadn't been at the scene calmly looked at the bodies, we might find something. Are they going to be a little, uh, a little dis disfigured? Because, uh, you know, nothing, nothing the epitaph about just slit in the throat. It was a little, but it was a little surprising that Auntie Rosa was also concerned about the bodies, just like I was. Even at this point, I still wanted to expose the culprit and the truth myself, if we could find any clues. But Auntie Rosa should have been different. Had not Auntie Rosa's plan given a higher priority to staying safe than to finding the culprit? I couldn't really see why Auntie Rosa wanted to check the body so badly that she would deliberately leave our fort in the parlor. Okay, squad up. Drawn magic circles? Oh yeah, you're the only one who's actually trying to solve the epitaph. Good on you, Maria. Yeah, she directly told us solve the epitaph. Well, yeah. She doesn't have to look. She can, like, stand out in the hallway with some other people. It seemed that George Anaki had some resistance bringing Maria to the bloody crime scene. But taking into consideration the fact that Maria would be left alone here, it would surely be much safer if we took Maria with us. In the end, it was just Anaki's irresponsible humanism. We decided that all of us, including Maria, would go to the servant room. Yeah, she can stay in the middle like it, like a calf in a herd of buffalo. It's blood. I bet in the servant room was stained with bright red blood. No, not just the bed. The whole room was covered with a gruesome paint from countless blood stains. That dreadful scene alone was enough to give us an idea of the repulsive sight that had been they had been trying to describe. Eh, it wouldn't be that bright red by now. It would have oxidized a fair amount. It'd be like fairly dark, like maybe a maroon would be a better way to describe it. Yeah, it's uh I mean, you're a creepy little shit who has no problem like looking at bodies, the little sociopath you are, but uh little kids shouldn't look at corpses. You'll see enough of that, like, once the internet rolls around. Uh, George Anaki was standing by the entrance, covering Maria's eyes with his back to the room. Probably didn't want a dirty and innocent girl's retinas with the repulsive red in this room. That was surely the correct decision. Like, I don't think Maria is the kind of kid that would, like, go out of her way to, like, kill an animal. But, like, she's definitely the kind of kid that, like... If she saw some roadkill, she'd be like, oh, neat, and, like, fucking poke it with a stick a bit to, like, move it around to get a better look at it. That was surely the correct decision. It's acting tough right now, so I don't mind. But I would probably remember this room and start to vomit whenever I saw red paint scattered around for the rest of my life. Yeah, all fucking 48 hours of it. My retinas already had this room burned into them. In other words, it was too late for me. Right after they entered the servant room, Godasan and Shannon Chan appeared flustered. We shook, wondering what horrible new situation had arisen to fluster them for a second time. Oh, um, there's no bodies. Auntie Rosa also shuddered, raising her gun high, searching for whatever it was that had shaken them. 
but you couldn't find it. Which wasn't surprising, because there's nothing to find, and that's the issue. They were shaken. They were sh shaken. I wanted to say shooken, but I don't think shooken's a word. They were shaken because they couldn't find it. Nanda, nanda. Do oh, sorry, Pat. I didn't mean to cut you off. It's like they just stood up and walked away. Yep. Well, you know, Kumasawa had a key. We've been on And if there's no bodies, you know. There goes the key. That's fair. It would be more of a question of how they got in without the key. There was a timid and pitiful smile on Godasan's face that he definitely wouldn't have let show normally. Shannon was the same. Yes, yes, it just was someone that looked like him, we know. Oh, you're just thinking with your dick. Yeah, it's just Cannon's secret twin. だって彼のマスターキーはジェシカちゃんの遺体のポケットから見つかったそしてその鍵は誰が手に入れたそうだなるほどウッチョウケ。あ、あ、オッケー。That's would have been easy for them to take the master key back. Auntie Rosa searched under the bed and in the locker. By now, I also understood what that meant. You assumed that there had been two culprits. It couldn't be easily explained. The first person was Kanakun, or maybe an imposter that looked like him. He had finished off Dr. Nanjo and ran off somewhere. The second person was... Probably the 19th person, Beatrice, whose location was unknown. She had hidden under the bed in the serving room beforehand, and with Dr. Nanjo's body still enshrined there, she had waited for Genji-san and the rest to leave. Then after that, she had crawled out, taken the master key back from Dr. Nanjo's pocket, and carried the two bodies away for some reason. Alright, I can get it being pretty easy to, like, cart off Kumasawa, you know, fucking spindly old woman, but, like... Dr. Nanjo's got some meat on his bones. You, like, just getting him off the floor is going to take, like, a couple people. Or at least, like, being able to roll him onto something and wheel him away. Like, you need, like, one of those little, one of those little pallet jacks. Just fucking throw him on there. But then, you know, you'd have to worry about, you know, trailing a, a massive amount of blood from the big gash in his neck. She had then locked the door with the master key. This locked room would be created. Here it is. Yuck it up. Yeah, we're getting a lot of practice with this. And, and that would be... Yep. Yeah.ふふ。言われなくてもわかってるぜ。あの時、あの場にいた人物以外知り得ない情報だって言ってんだろ。It'd be ridiculous to assume they knew it. この第三の密室があっさり破られちまったもんで。<laughs> 
そういう手で俺に闇を言うしかねえんだろ同じネタの繰り返しは芸がないぜ Even though it was acting tough The move of the witch is What? That move of the witch is hurt bad I can feel cracks forming in the thing I most wanted to deny She's trying to close in on me from two directions On the one hand There's the frontal attack Where she tries to force me to believe in witches Using locked room tricks that only a witch could do And on the other hand, there's the rear attack, where she tries to lure me into thinking it would be better if it was... if there was a witch, by strengthening my suspicions of those close to me. In the first locked room, the chapel, she had used the frontal attack, but it hadn't worked on me. That's undoubtedly why, with the second locked room, now the third, she started to change the direction of her attack. However, The fact that she was changing the direction of her attack also proved that my resistance was working a little. And she had surely given up on the frontal attack because she couldn't just win directly with it. I tried to force myself to accept my own position by thinking that. But it seemed that the witch had also seen through these thoughts of mine long ago. <laughs> カラメテ飲みに出す。いや、サンドウィッチ。手段が目的となった時に起こる愚策に過ぎるぞ。そうですかい。じゃあ、お得意の赤で何者かが使用に質に隠れていたを復唱してもらおうじゃないか。いや、
uh, the master key that Nanjo had found in Jessica's pocket, which had originally been Cannon's, and Kumasawa's master key. No, wait, they they have the chapel key because it was in their envelope. Then what's the third key? Oh, Kumasawa's? Because they got... No, fuck. I'm losing track of everything. My brain is melting tonight. Okay. The master key that Nanjo had, which had been cannons, Kumasawa's master key... Okay, I guess it's just a generic, generic key ring fucking CG. Just ignore, ignore the big one in the middle. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, you just... You, you just fucking walked around the issue. ベッドの下にでも隠れれば死体をどこかへ運び出すのはできないことじゃないしかしそれじゃ施錠ができないわざわざ手に入れたマスターキーをここへ置いてっちまってるそうだ忘れてたこの部屋の本来の鍵である Alright, alright, fair. There is the big, like, key box in this room hanging on the wall. Well,それなら使用人室の奥のキーボックスに収められているぞ。使用人室の鍵は数本あるが、そのすべてがキーボックスに収められている。ってことは、ジェシカの部屋の鍵のところに状況は何も変わらないってことか。使用人も便利なマ
So say like a dead end crawl space. はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。は
せっかく思いついたのにお前が隠れていたんなら全て説明がついたのにトリックを打ち破れたと思ったってのに Yeah, that's frustrating when you realize you fucking dead end line of thinking. Oh, no, don't, don't cry in front of her. That's really fucking bad. That's a bad move, my guy. It's no good, no good, no good, no goddamn good. For a second, I thought I had it. It's no goddamn good at all. Ah, Beatrice, you bitch. Thought you were all smoke and mirrors, playing word games that made clever use of red. I was certain you just cleverly deceived me. I just when I thought I'd seen the light in the darkness, I disappeared, disappeared, swallowed up by, by a blood red sea. Red, 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 red. Red rum? No one is hiding. There's no hidden door, and there's no way to trick the doors or the windows while they're locked. Trick the doors or windows? I don't think you can trick an inanimate object, my guy. Have you just proven that it's all impossible? Has the devil's proof been pulled off with a frontal attack? Impossible. This is impossible! Well, look, man. You know. Uh, my man is just too earnest, you know. Yep. Quick, fucking show her, show her like a drunk donkey trying to like climb the stairs. That like it's eaten too many uh fucking fermented figs. She'll laugh herself to death. Mm -hmm. You know what? Don't think you are. Wait, you're just gonna tell him to fucking tap out? <laughs> What do you mean? Yeah, smart. There's just no place to hide that we know of. Yeah, that's what we thought. What do you mean? At that point, the only person that, like, wasn't in our main group was... Well... Kinzo and... Shannon and Genshi, but they were off with Kinzo. Unless they're all in cahoots. Oh, Jessica just did it and then killed herself? Jessica! If Jessica were the culprit, farce like that could easily be constructed. She killed Ken and Kun. Carried him off somewhere. Then she played dead and let us walk by. But that's ridiculous. Dr. Nanjo would definitely check that she was dead. So was Dr. Nanjo an accomplice too? Hmm, possibly. That's wrong. It also made sure that Jessica was really dead. Uh, sure, I'd never performed an examination of a corpse before, but she was definitely dead. I think she was dead. Uh, here's, here's the problem, bud. You're going from definitely to I think, and then it's all just gonna unravel. No. She probably, surely, definitely, at least I think so, but she has to be. No. No, she was dead. She was dead. Jessica <laughs> 
Yeah, then it's simple. Dr. Nanjo was an accomplice, so in other words. He was on the culprit's side, so in other words, in other words. He was never killed in the first place? He thought he had been killed and the body had disappeared. But he wasn't in the servant room in the first place? And his Kumasawa Bachan, who disappeared with him, also an accomplice? No, that's not all, that's not all! The servants who were going along with that story, Kenji-san and Goto-san, and even shen and Chan are accomplices! Then, the one who stole the key from Maria's handbag was Jessica. No, no, it was also possible that it was George Anaki. After all, if shen and Chan was on the culprit's side, then George Anaki would automatically be on the culprit's side as well. Wait a second, just wait a second. They're all wolves. They're all wolves! Not only am I drowning in an ocean of bright red blood, there are packs of wolves clamoring on the banks, whose blazing eyes tell me that if I crawl out, they'll eat me! Uh, which way should I die? I have everything denied and drown in a bright red sea? And I know the truth and have my whole body chewed to bits by the wolves. It's either one hell or the other. I can't choose! That, that was my best Kumasawa impression. Did you like it? Why are you so into like that Axis submission and feet thing? I mean, not really. Oh god, my brain immediately jumped into like some fucking deviant art tier thing where Battler is like a lazy boy and Beatrice is in it or something. Some fucking curse shit. Be glad I'm not that good of an artist. Otherwise, I could make some fucking heinously cursed art. They're just showing off all their sprites. Huh? Yeah, what did you just decide by yourself here? What yeah. Beatrice did it. As Auntie Rosa yelled this, she looked over at everyone with a harsh, harsh expression. But no, she she thinks all the servants is, servants are on board with this. Reasonably, from her perspective, this is just a fucking wild goose case. A goose case? Goose chase. She's getting fucking led around by the nose. You're being tricked by the servants. You gotta get them before they get us. Uh, because Rose is paranoid. Yep. 
Seeing is believing, after all. To be fair, your story is super fucking weird and full of holes. Yeah, you're in a little bit of a catch-22 here. Well, here it is. I'm just gonna fucking tear the party apart. Bang, bang, bang. <sighs> but we don't have an ex explanation for how it was done, so therefore, you know. Can't really blame her for, you know, jumping to conclusions in this fairly stressful situation. Shannon had finally broken down in tears. She had sacrificed 10 years to the Ushramiya family. She had sacrificed 10 years to the most brilliant years of her life. And she had believed that she would have built up a friendly relationship with Rosa as well. And this is how she was treated. You could kill a person without using a knife. It wasn't just George Henneke. What? Is that, did I read that right? And a friendly relationship with Rosa as well. How, how she was treated. You could kill a person without using a knife. I'm, I guess that's like going after their feelings. I don't know. It's that's probably some like translated idiom. Eh, eh. It wasn't just George Anaki. Even I could recognize that Shen and Shen had been stabbed deep into her heart as blood by the name of tears flowed out. <laughs> Alright, Goda, maybe not as bad as I thought. She's talking about yourself in third person. But I don't understand anymore. Don't understand. I can't seek an answer without suspecting them. That's it. Bit by bit, I'm starting to understand. It's because we seek an answer. That's why everything keeps getting stranger. We don't need an answer. These are all strange murders committed by bizarre magic by the 19th person, the witch Beatrice, as she follows a creepy ritual. Isn't that good enough? I don't want to suspect anyone anymore. Really? Only after round two, you're already getting worn down? Come on, bud. I thought you had, I thought you had more endurance than that. Shen and Chen and Goto-san were protesting their innocence, half in tears. Genji-san quietly stopped that. Yeah. From the evidence at hand. Yeah. It's the logical thing to come to. No way to prove your innocence is. Sorry, Genji, we're speaking too slow. That's right. By Rosa-san's argument, the corpses could be found, that the innocence of at least those people could be proved. But only those who were corpses. Even if they searched around the mansion and found the corpses, in the end, their own innocence would not be proved. They had a... They had abducted Dr. Nanjo and Kumasawa-san, killed them in another place, then locked this room with their own master keys. Unless the locked room could be broken by a method other than that one, it would be impossible to prove their innocence. But that couldn't be done. 
it couldn't be done at least in a way that we see right now from the facts we understand. They only have one chance to prove their innocence. That can only happen when they meet with the culprit, become corpses, and are reunited with Auntie Rosa. Oh, that's messed up. Innocent if they die, guilty as long as they live. Almost like a witch's trial. Oh, right. The enemy's a witch. So that makes it okay? どうぞ。私たちは後ろ宮家にお仕えする家具です。Yes。私たちも信用されるもされないと思います。いや、we're just Bi-weekly? Monthly? What are your benefits? You got dental? Well, it's not exactly like a Kenji-san stuck his hand into his pocket and pulled out a master key. Then, he set it on an adjacent table. <笑>信頼の証としてこれを預かっていると信じているそれを失ったならこれをお返しするのは当然ポーケンジそれはいい判断ね今日何度もあなたたちが疑われてきた最大の根拠はこのマスターキーそれを手放せば<笑> 疑いが晴らせるのではないかというのは初歩的ではあるけれど。まあ、悪いことじゃないと思うわ。Yeah. Yep, fork him over. Kenji-san looked at Goto-san and Shen and Chan. Two of them nodded and set their own master keys onto the table. Auntie Rosa had laid out the two master keys that had come out of the envelope on top. With that, all five master keys were gathered in this place. Okay, so it's just a generic, generic key ring, fucking CG. Gotcha. In other words, this was proof that all the servants' sacrifice until today had been negated, and even the final honor that they should have been permitted had been stripped from them. Maria, sono tesagi o kashinase. Ah, Calm down. Auntie Rosa snatched Maria's handbag, tossed all the master keys in there noisily, then lifted them out and held it for all to see. She was announcing that she had all the master keys. Yeah, you've unlocked... You know, you've got all five of the keys, you're gonna unlock the secret level and get the Chaos Emerald. Can you though? You're pretty emotionally unstable. Okay. <laughs> What a benevolent dictator you are. <laughs> then, Maria, who had looked like a spectator off by herself, sneered at her mother. Auntie Rosa reacted nervously to that laugh and turned around. Yeah, magic, duh. なんていらない。そんなもの誰が持っていたって持っていなくたって関係ないんだよ。いや、しんどうだろしわんつ。その笑い方をやめなさいっていつも言ってるでしょ。お、バトラ君。え、ちょっとカップ<笑><笑> Hugging Maria's head. I was crying. 
。もう。よしてくれよ。ローザおばさん。<笑>マリアが。楽しかったんだ。Nah, you can't tap out. The surly? That was, it was just a witch, man. マリア、疑って悪かった。信じなくて悪かった。Nah, you just. マトラ。全部、魔女の仕業だったんだ。魔女の仕業だったんだよ。トリックとかミスとか、とても良かったんだ。ただ、ただ、ペアトリーチェっていう魔女が実在して、本当に魔女だっただけなんだ。それを、俺は信じなかったから、こんなにも悲しくて。No, no, 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 no. All right, who's gonna fucking pull you out of this one? Atora wa Beatrice o shinji de kureru? Ah, shinji. Beatrice wa irunda. So ste. Oh, shiki na maho o tsuka. Majo nanda. Atora. Maria let go of my hand, and then she was the one holding my hand. So de inda yo, Atora. Yeah, just, just don't, don't, don't think about the hard things. It was just magic, man. All the complicated stuff, you know, just the witch did it. All the bad things that are too hard to think about, uh, you know, couldn't help it. You know, a witch did it. There, there's no other way. Just give up. Well, we still need a couple more corpses, so. At least like two? Yeah, let's get that gold. Yeah, you guys still really need to try to solve the epitaph. You being any distraction on these side quests about, you know, everyone dying? Ah. So that that. Hani Sagashante. Matakuno Jikan no Mudatanda. Oretacha. Tada Majo. Shinchiba Yokatanda. After softly brushing my cheek as my tears kept dripping down, Maria kissed my forehead as soft as a feather. For just that instant, Maria's smile, which I had once thought was creepy, looked like an angel. Well, she looks fine when she's not doing like her <laughs> face. Yes, check on Kinzo anytime recently. I feel like we should at least fucking swing by to see if he's like, you know, still kicking. I'm not sure if 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 I'm not uh, yeah, there is like a lot of blood on the floor, and we don't. Well, we know whose it is. But at least from their perspective, they can't confirm whose it is. Sorry. Good old Genji just living by it is what it is. Alright, 
Do you have any hobbies, Genji? Like, what do you do in your spare time? I mean, you seem like a guy that's married to his work, but, like, you know, there's... You, you, like, play golf. Make model ships. Why are y'all speaking so grandly like this? I just threw my head back and looked up at the ceiling. Auntie Rosa nodded in response. Genji san turned on his heels. He left the servant room. Yoda san's face was still streaked with tears. But as he listened to Genji san's words, maybe he had managed to sort out his heart. No, no crying Goda Sprite? I saw a picture about how, uh, using the original, the original sprites, Rosa doesn't have a crying face. So someone made a mod where they just photoshopped Battler's crying face onto hers. So that way, you know, there, there was a crying Rosa sprite they could use when they needed it. I guess Goda doesn't get enough sprites. R.I.P. King. Uh, his face had been truly shameful, but it had returned to the face of the Goda-san we knew well. Yeah, at least she can cook to pass the time. いつでもご用命ください。温かい食事をお望みでしたら、いつでもこの豪だ。最高のお料理を用意させていただきます。ありがとう。あなたには明日の朝食を頼みたいわ。明日の昼前には船も来るでしょう。Go for some chef boy D. かしこまりました。このゴーダ、最高の朝食を用意いたします。Like got no food. The only thing I have is like a cup of ramen in the cupboard. I ate the last of my kipper snacks yesterday. 明日の朝に美味しいコーヒーを飲みながら仲直りをしましょう。uh, well, have fun dying. Yeah, because how many people is it? It's like stabbed in like the leg, the thigh. Uh what are the other ones? Uh da -da -da. Second twilight, the head, the chest, the stomach, the knee. Well, Nanjo and Kumasawa are already dead, so it's just the the three left. Yeah, the stomach, the knee, and the leg. But I guess really she could do it in any order she wants. Well, the, to the corpses, you know, doesn't matter what order they die in, just that it gets done. Well, you say that. We know how well that happened last time. But man, the splitting of the party happened really early this time around. Last time it was, uh... It was like the middle of the night up in fucking Kinzo's study. Yeah, if you want to get yourself killed, that's your own prerogative. Ugh, that means we gotta hang out with Maria. それが一番安全なんだ。客間の外はそれに比べたら安全ではないと思う。なら、そんな場所にいる彼女を僕は一人にしておけない。俺は決してシャノンちゃんや他の使用人もいや、it's not like we suspect them. We're just, you know, still just
んなのくだらねえじゃねえかよそんなので殺し合いなんてあるわけねえじゃねえかよ Well I don't know the how rough it is out there in the real world but people will kill each other over a lot Sure, you will, Maria. Maria to his son, Beatrice de Motera, she did. Got any more of them, uh, fucking scorpion charms? I don't, I'm not sure if you gave him out this round. Cool, can you cast a fireball? Maria chan, Batra kun o, yarashiku. Sa, Shannon, iko. Hi, Rosa sama. それでは失礼させていただきますご要命がございましたらいつでもお呼びつけください yeah, you know, <laughs> さっきはひどいいいいことを言ってごめんなさいね明日の朝まで許さなくてもいい yeah, でも明日の朝になったらもう一度謝らせてはいありがとうございます George and Ki and Shen and Chan left the servant room together. Now, only Maria, Auntie Rosa, and I were left in this disgusting, blood stained room. Till Genji san disappeared, till Goda san disappeared, till George and Ki and Shen and Chan disappeared, we stood there in a daze. After their presence and their footsteps had disappeared completely, Auntie Rosa giggled at them, so she just remembered something pleasant. Nope. That one sentence made me choke. I mean, because you can't. You know, current current circumstances completely reasonable. Well, there, there used to be in, in different world lines, but not in this one. Oh, sweet summer child, Battler. そのあげくとしてその鍵を手放させたんだぜ。その捨て台詞は何だよ。ここまでして見せて。なおまだ信用できないってのかよ。いや。マリだぜ。あんまりだぜそんなのって。悪魔の証明なのに。マスターキーは
もうやめてもうやめて<笑>言葉だけでは届かぬぞ態度で示せ Ah, the last wrinkle in his brain has just completely been ironed out, completely smooth, like a boiled egg. What? Alright, this is getting weird. Getting, getting weirdly into this, Beatrice. I'm not sure how comfortable I am observing this. Like, this is, this is between you two? Am I a third wheel here? Should I go? Mm. I don't know what you will. Well, only the fact that there are five is in red, not that you'll tell Rosa is in red, so there's no proof that you'll actually do that. Yeah, the, the cracks are showing. Yeah, and you got like, oh, you got a chub, didn't you, battler? I can, I can see it. You're starting to like hunch forward a little bit, scoop back in your seat. Are there any mirrors here? Yeah, just just mash the button on the soundboard. I should get the soundboard. If I wasn't so lazy. Well, my man's down pretty low, but you know, when you're at rock bottom, there's only one place to go, and that's up. Just, uh, someone's gonna need to fucking fish his lifeless corpse off the floor and, like, drag him up. But, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's see who that will be next time on the next episode of Umineko, because, uh, the chapter just ended, and, oh man, I am in a rough state right now. Like most times, like when I'm recording, it goes by pretty quick. But like, I was I was looking over at my timer on OBS. And I'm like, holy shit! I've only been going for 25 minutes. It feels like an eternity. So right now, I'm at the end of my rope. So I'm tapping out. Not just because I always end, or at least always try to end where the chapter break is, but because I am I'm losing it. You can tell because I'm rambling and I'm not making any sense. So I will spare you from listening to me anymore. Hope to see you guys all next time, but before that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell. See you next time for the next episode of Human Neck. I'll see you guys all then. Later. Bye. Go do something else more productive with your life. Bye.